okay so now let's start adding the functionality to these links and for that we should go to our navbar because uh, the links are there in the navbar um so if we go inside our layouts i think we have navbar here and navbar.js let's just open that up and <clears throat> here you can see you have the books and the home links and they are basically currently an anchor tag right now so what we're going to do is instead of anchor tag we're going to use a component that is called that is that comes from react router dom because as you guys know we are using react router in order to like uh, use the routing right so like the normal anchor tag html anchor tag won't work here so what we're going to do is we're going to import a component that comes from the react router dom and that component name is link those uh, and we're going to use the link component in order to add functionality to these links okay so first what we're going to do here is we are going to import import link and remember you have to import link using like this curly braces and because they are not exported by default so import link from react router dom right and basically link is a component just like you had routes you had route and the browser router you can use the same way for links as well um, so here instead of this anchor tag what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write link and in the closing tag instead of this a I'm just going to add link and basically that's how you create the link component and since we have removed the anchor tag we should remove this href as well and instead of this href we have to create a prop that that goes by the name of two and here we have to specify the actual path that you want to go to when pressing on this link or when clicking on this link so let's say um we have the home link here so when when i click on this link i don't want to go anywhere to be honest i just want to go to the home page so we have to specify that route of where we want to go inside this uh two prop okay so like we want to go to our home page and the home page route is basically a slash so what you're going to do is we're just going to add a slash here and this will take you back to the home page and similarly for the books page let's just add a link and let's enclose it with a link as well remove the a tags and remove this href as well and instead of this href we are going to add a to prop and inside this prop we are going to specify the path again and in case of our books we are going to take the user or like navigate the user to our books page right and i think the route would be books right and let's just save that and see how this works so if you go back to our project um, if i click on this books here it should leave, it should like take me to the books page so if i click here there you go it's taking me to the book page now right so and if i click on this home page it should take me back to our home page and there you go guys we have just uh, implemented the links functionality so basically what we did was we imported a link from react router dom and using that link component we are basically uh, being able to navigate the user to different links so the next thing that i want to do is add a dynamic value for our books right so let's just start with the books uh, so instead of these like these are all static values as you can see it's the same book right so like we have we have to kind of like uh, add dynamic values and like dynamic by, by dynamic values i mean like um there should be like different books for every card okay <clears throat> now we can hard code it right um so if you go to our um i think it should be inside the books page right inside the books page and inside the product listing all component so let's go to product listing all yeah so like we can hard code each and every card but like that would really be a mess right you know um let's say like you have a thousand and thousands of books so how are you going to hard code like thousands of books right and so normally what happens is like if you, when you're using like when you're creating a production level application uh, you get you get the data from the back end and you kind of manipulate that data not like manipulate not like change the data but then you use that data in order to create multiple cards and each of the cards should have a different book so that's how you do it um, 
normally but since we don't have any backends uh, what we're going to use is um, so we are going to create our raw data so remember that like I showed you this uh, util folder so like inside this folder I have the book data so inside this book data.js I have basically created like multiple objects over here so basically it's an array of objects it's a raw data so basically I have 16 I think 16 to 17 books and these are basically uh, the book details so you have the book name you have the book description uh, the book URL which is basically going to be the book image and the image is going to be in the form of a URL uh, and not, uh, so so that like we don't have to locally like create and store the images uh, and then like we're going to have the print length which is the like number of pages in a book uh, we're going to have a language we're going to have the author name and finally the price so I think these are the main values that you require so yeah these are basically collection of objects and I've already like exported it from from book data.js so all we need to do is we need to import it and then we can use it so what we're going to do is in our book details.js so not sorry not book details.js in our detail section I guess nope not the detail section either I think it should be our product listing all dot js yeah so so let's just close the other um, components for now since I don't need it so inside our product listing all components so this section is basically um, this entire section the card section right <clears throat> So here instead of like creating uh, multiple divs what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a single div right for now and if you save this uh, you'll just see a single card here which is okay for now um, so here we are going to import that book data okay um, and if you want this uh, file I'm just going to like share the link below in the description so that you can go over there and you can like go go to that link uh it'll probably you'll probably end up in a github re repo repository and there you'll find this book data.js and you can basically uh copy the either copy the file or copy the object like uh it's up to you so i'll just share the link below so if you want to get this data uh you can get that uh from my github link and like if you want to use your own data feel free to do as well so uh, moving forward let's go to our product listing all and let's import this book data from here okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to import um book data but since we are not we, we are, we're not exporting like we are not using export default we are using export const book data we can't uh, say like um, we can't import like this we can't import by saying book data we have to enclose this inside the curly braces so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say book data okay and we're going to import from and now we need to locate this book data.js file so let's just go back let's just go back um, three folders back and then we can go to the util folder and inside this util now util basically stands for utilities uh, so inside this util folder we have the book data file and from that file we are basically importing our book data value which is basically an array of multiple objects and that objects and those objects are basically our book data that we need okay oops I think I made something mistake uh, let's just click control Z yeah Let's just go back to product listing all and we have like imported the book data but like if you're still not sure like whether it's imported or not or whether you have that data or not you can always check that out inside your component by saying console.log and here i'm just going to add a value of book data and if you save this up if you go to our browser and inspect and check the console you can see that you have an array right here and let's click on this array and there you go guys we have like so these are basically the book details that we had imported from the book details uh, file uh, so since we are we are we are being able to log this book data so that means this um, so that means that this uh, data is legit and now we can use this data in order to show like different books here 
and I think I'm also getting a warning here that's saying invalid DOM property class so I think I have added I have made a mistake of just writing class instead of class name you won't see any like difference in your output but still like it's not a good practice to write class instead of class name so let's just check like where this um, which code is causing this warning so you are at label div form so I think it's in the footer section uh, in our label so let me go to the footer section quickly um, so here we have the footer section and I think it's in the label tag there you go we have made a class instead of class name so let's just add that class name here and I think that uh, warning should go now there you go we don't have any red flags all right so we are getting this data so let's just map this data now so let's go let's close this footer let's go back to our product listing all okay I'll just keep this console log for now so here now what we need to do is we have our data in the form of an array right and it has multiple objects so what we're going to do is we are going to map through that array and for each array element we are going to return this section which is div class name grid item so we're going to return the grid item section for every array element and the way we we are going to do that is with the help of a map function okay so map function is basically a special type of function or like it's basically an array method and what it does is it takes in an array it modifies every element of an array depending on what function like what logic we have written in the function and it returns a new array like modifying all the values of the previous array okay so here instead of modifying we're just going to return this new element for every array elements okay um, I don't know if you guys understood or not but once you do it by yourself everything will be clear for you okay um, so here what I'm going to do is uh, just above the grid item let's create a curly braces so adding a curly braces means inside this we are going to use some JavaScript so here what I'm going to say uh, what I'm going to write is book data and remember it's an array the, and the map method that you have in JavaScript only works with arrays okay so we are going to add a map method here by adding a dot and then saying map so book data dot map and inside this method it takes in a function okay so it takes in a function and we are going to use the arrow function and in this function gets a parameter which is which will be basically one array element okay so let's just call it book okay and inside this function what we're going to do is we're going to read Return. we are going to return and don't forget to add this brackets over here we are going to return something and that would be this div let's just paste that and let's just see how this works uh, let me add a space here as well yeah so basically what we're doing is we are mapping through all the elements that are present in the book data okay and for each element we are going to return this div so if there are four elements in this book data for all the four elements we'll be returning this div okay and if you like save this file and go to your browser you're going to see like multiple books and there you go now although we have like returned this like div element for all the array elements and when I'm saying array elements I'm saying like these objects for all these objects like we are returning this div but we're still not changing the value so let's now start by changing uh, the values so what I'm going to do is in our product listing card I'm going to create a prop by the name of book data and I'm going to pass a value of this book right here okay so because this book contains our book data so I'm going to pass it here and in our product listing card let's just open our product listing card inside our cards we have the product listing card there you go and uh, so since you have passed a prop here with the name of book data you can get it here either by adding a props or by adding a curly braces and then saying book data so this is basically you are destructuring from the 
props object so let's just go over here and instead of this the jungle book which is the book name uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to add the book name for all the books so book data data dot book name and the book name come book name value comes from here okay uh, so let's just save this and see and there you go guys all uh, for all the cards you can see that now the book name are different book books name are different for all the cards so that's the first thing now let's also change the author name right um, let's just add and remember we are inside the JSX this is and this book data dot book name is basically a JavaScript variable. So whenever you are using JavaScript inside JSX, you have to use it inside the curly braces, and that's why I'm adding the curly braces. I keep I keep reminding you this so that it keep it like stucks in your head. Like this is all for the beginners. Like if you are a mid developer, mid level React developer, then you might already be knowing this. But it's very necessary for those people who are like just starting out with React. Like it's very difficult at first. Um, when you transition from javascript to react so that's why i keep like repeating again and again few like concepts and few terms so that it gets stuck in your head like for a long time so um let's move on enough with the motivational speech <laughs> so book data dot author name author name and author name basically comes from here okay uh so let's just save this Let's just see if our data is changing and there you go guys the data is changing for the author name as well now finally let's change our price so here instead of this 300 i'm going to add a curly brace and then say book let's just close the curly brace as well so book data dot i think it should be price um yeah it's price uh, let's just save this go back and you can see the pricings are changed as well although i would not want a white space in between and now it looks much better okay um finally i think we should change the image as well so image let's just go to our image here and instead of this product image what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this book url okay uh, so here i'm going to say book data dot book url url okay let's just save that and see and there you go guys um the first thing is the book data is changing the second thing is this book data is not aligned so yeah let's align this book data as well but first let me inspect and see what's the issue in terms of the layout um, so we have this div that is the product listing card and then we have our product listing image container and then we have the image i think we have a little bit of problem in the product listing card styling um, because we have added a padding right of 2.8 rem but we haven't added a padding left i think and that is the reason why like it's going to the left so let me go quickly over to our code let's go to our product listing card.styles.css and here i have given a padding right of 2.8 rem let's just remove this and see how this looks and hmm, currently nothing changes for now let me kind of remove the paddings padding top and padding bottom as well let's see how this looks when you have no paddings this is kind of breaking the ui uh, so like one thing what i've done here is i've set the width of this um the card container to fit content right so instead of fit content what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a width of uh, somewhere around 23 percent right uh -huh. 23 percent doesn't work um let's add a width of 100 percent
you just save that yeah so i have so now instead of fit content i've set the width of these cards to 100 percent now what i need to do is i need to set the height and the width for the image as well so so in order to do that let's target the product listing image container first and just above the product listing image we are going to target the product listing image container and let's set its width to 100 percent so like it's also going to take the entire space that is taken by the cart container but for its height i want it to be around 20 rem and for the product listing image what i want to do is instead of width 200 pixel i want to set the width to 100 percent and height height to 100 percent let's save that it's the images are kind of stretching because i think their aspect ratio does not match so what i'm going to do is for this image we need to um, add a property called object fit so object fit and here i'm going to add a property of contain let's just save that so what content fit will do is it will like uh, respond to your parents um, uh, height and width but it will also like uh, make sure that it has the same aspect ratio so that your image does not stretch too much okay another thing that i want to do here is i want to add a padding top so in our product listing card again so let's add a padding of two rem on top and bottom and one rem on left and right let's see how this looks i think we also need to little bit like reduce the height of the book so um instead of 20 rem let me just add 15 rem in our image container and let's see how this looks okay now this is looking much better than before uh final thing is i think i need to center uh, our image so uh, inside a product listing image container i'm just going to add a text align of center because our image is a span element so it's going to get centered i think i've also added padding in this details details section so let me quickly go over there and see if i've added a padding yeah i've added i've added a padding top and padding left here so let me remove this padding left you know what let's add a padding in general of two of them on top and bottom and two of them on left and right let's see how this will look hmm. how about one rem on left and right yeah it's looking much better than before but the final thing is these buttons are not aligned i think to to each other um, and that and the number one reason is because like because of this text like this is a single line text um this is a double line text and due to this like there are some differences in spacings so in order to make this height uh like similar to each other what we can do is we can go to our um code like copy this button tag and we need to make sure that it comes out of the product listing details container and let's just create another div here let's add a div over here and inside this let's let's paste this uh, button and here let's add a class name of card button container right let's just save this and let's see for now okay it's coming down so in order to give this a padding like it's getting the padding from the cart container i think one rem so like we can make this two rem and it's a little bit inside but then once you give the two rem like these details are going like shrinking way down so what i'm going to do is we have also added a padding in this details container um, i'm just going to remove the one rem so let's just say two and zero or like let's just add a padding top here we also don't need much on the bottom so let's just add a padding top of two rem let's save that and okay this is looking much better than before 
all we need to do is we need to align these buttons together so for that uh, let's just set a min height here so minimum height of let's say um, 20 rem let's save that i think 20 rem is way 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 big how about 10 rem all right and you can see that now these buttons are aligning with each other okay so now that we have all these uh, books that are listed over here what we need to do is when you click on this button like instead of this button i think we should add art add to cart um, so here instead of this button i'm going to add add to cart something like this okay and so now when you click on this button it should lead me to the product page so let's just set that up as well and just now we learned like a little bit earlier we learned that you can do that with the help of link component that you get from the react router dom so let's import the link component and let's also like remove this product image because we are not going to use it for now from now so here i'm going to import the link component from react router dom react router dom and here let's just remove this with link and this with link as well let's save that and let's just remove this href too and this is going to be a little bit trickier instead of this double quotes i'm going to use a back tick because we are going to use a6 templating string and for the backticks to work we have to enclose this inside curly braces because this is javascript right um, yeah and inside this uh, we need to specify the link now since we are going to the product page right um the link to the product page is dynamic remember that we in our like app.js file um, we have added this dynamic route over here so you do have the book details route which is static and after that you have this id that is going to be a dynamic value so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to say slash book details and slash and for the id what i'm going to do is i'm going to pass that id that comes from the book data so i'm going to pass uh, book data dot id and in order to like add a value as a variable over here we need to use a dollar and then we have to open and close curly brace and inside this we can use that value so book data dot id let's just save that and let's see if this works or not so if you go back to our books page if i click on any of these uh, links you can see that you are going to the book details page along with this id right here and if you click on another book and you can see it has an id of two similar way uh, if you add a book if you click on this uh, button here you have an id of 10 so each book has a different id and with that id you are like being able to navigate to the book details page okay now using this id what you're going to do is we are going to um, like add those details of that particular book inside this page okay all right so this value that we are sending over here this dynamic value this is basically a parameter and the value of this parameter you can fetch it in our like book details page with the help of a special hook which is use params hook okay so if you go to our book details page now let's remove all this because we do not need it now um, let's go to our book details.js and let's go to our details section because that is the that is basically our this entire section right um so yeah details section and here what you can do is you can import uh, the use params hook from the react router dom so let's just import that so import use params from react router dom right now we can use this hook in order to fetch our this data which is basically the id and the way we fetch this data is by saying const and then we need to like destructure it here and here we have to specify the name of that 
dynamic parameter and when i say name of the parameter i'm talking about the name that you had given right here which is this id so what we can do here is we can specify this id and we can get it from use params and if you console log and check this id so let's just console.log and if you check this id let's just save this file and let's inspect this you can actually see that you are getting this value from here okay so basically use params is like giving us this parameter value in any component okay now let's check with other values as well so if i click on to this this new book and here you can see that you are getting it as a parameter value and here you are also getting it as the value so this is actually working like we are getting this value in our um component with the help of use params hook that comes from the react router dom okay and now with the help of this value we can actually um get the data okay so what we're going to do is basically we're going to filter out this that object data that we had i'm going to import this uh, book data and then i'm going to like filter out all the datas and just keep that data whose id will be equal to our id okay uh, if that doesn't make sense uh, let's just uh, try try to code it up and you know uh, something will make sense for you so uh, i'm going to import that book data here as well so import book data data from and i'm going to map the book data so dot dot slash uh, dot dot slash dot dot slash and i think it's inside the utils folder book data let's just save that so you have the book data you have the id now all that is left is to add the logic that filters that data so what you're going to do is we are going to use another react hook which is use effect right and use effect hook is basically a hook that runs every time the component loads so like if you go to if you navigate to your book details page this component is going to get loaded and then like the use effect hook is going to run so and every time the use use effect hooks run we are going to filter out the data okay depending on the id so instead of this console.log id i am going to add a use effect hook here and let's also add an empty dependency array for now and inside this what i'm going to do is i'm going to filter out the book data so we're going to say let new data is equals to and we're going to use the array filter function so since our book data is already an array we're going to say book data dot filter method and inside this we are going to have a function right so and inside this function we are going to say book and here going to we are going to say book dot id equals 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 id all right so what is happening here let me just help you understand the code so here what we're doing is we have the book data which is our like big array right here so we are filtering out each data right depending on the id so what we're doing is we are going through each of this object right which is basically this book so we are going through each of this object and we are checking if its id which is this id that is equals to this id that we get from the use params if both of them are equal then we are adding the data in our new data otherwise we are just like skipping it so this is how we use the filter function so now if you console log and see our new data console.log new data let's just save that let me inspect this in our console i think we haven't got any uh, array i think something is wrong yeah i think we're getting an empty array 
Hmm. And I think the reason why is because let me try with double equals. Okay, with double equals we are getting it. Okay. And I think the reason why it didn't work with the triple equals to is because of the type differences. So because like I think the book ID is an integer, but our ID here is that we get from our parameter, right? Uh, this is basically a string. So what we're going to do is we're going to like parse it into an integer. And in JavaScript, you have a method called parse int like function. Right, and inside this lab just added an ID here. Let's just see if this works or not. Let's just go back and let me click on any of these books. And there you go, guys. Instead of the empty array, we are getting this uh, filtered array value. So uh, we're going to use another hook here to save our data and it's going to be a use state hook right um, so let's create our state so const uh, book data set book data equals to use state by default let's just add an empty array or an empty object Hmm, that should do it and if you guys are like very new to react if some of if some of I, if some of you are like very new to react now use state is a special type of hook that is basically used for storing your state okay so storing your values um so what use state does is it returns this two things it will give you two things uh, one is the data and the second one is a function okay that is going to change your data okay so first thing is you have the normal data that you want to use and later on if you like in any case like if you want to change this data then you have to use this set uh, function in order to like change your data because state cannot be because since state are immutable you cannot change its value directly otherwise you'll get an error so use state provides a special function that is going to change your state so here instead of console logging new data what i'm going to do is i'm going to set the book data data to new data zero and the reason why we added a zero here inside the square brackets is because new data is an array okay um see uh, new data is basically an array but we don't want to save an array in our book details we want to save the object that is present inside the array and to get that object we have to add zero because we are picking the first element of this array uh, so that's why we have to add zero inside the square brackets uh, you can also try that out in our console.log you can say zero and if you save this you will get this object directly Okay, otherwise you were getting this array previously. Uh, now you can just get the object just by doing like this. So this is what I have saved inside our book data. So let me just remove this console log for now. Okay, now, now we can use this book data in our JSX. Okay, so inside of this atomic habits, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a book data because we are going to have dynamic values and inside and i'm going to use a property of uh, book name so book name uh, let's just save that and see and there you go you are getting harry potter and the order of phoenix instead of atomic habits so which means that the book data is changing if you try it for a different uh, book you'll be able to see that the title of this book is changing so now let's change all these values. So instead of uh, James Clear, let's add book data, data dot author name. Okay. And instead of this lorem ipsum, let's just add an alt Z to wrap the text. And let's just remove this lorem ipsum for now. And instead of this, let's add book data 
dot description right and the language should be book data dot language right okay and instead of this 300 we are going to have book data i think it should be print length yeah and if we can remove these pages as well so book data dot print length right and yeah we should change the price as well so book data dot price let's save that and see hmm, it's working fine uh, except for the fact that book description is not being shown here and oh it should be book description not just description so let's add a book here as well so book description and now you're getting the description as well and the final thing we have to change is this image right here so instead of the book detail image i'm going to add book data dot book url i think let's see uh yeah book url so i've added that let's see if you're getting the book and there you go guys we have changed the content for the book details page now if you go back and like try it out with a different book uh, you'll be able to see that book here as well which is pretty amazing like you have used a single component and with the help of single component we are being able to like display multiple books right so this is really amazing uh, use case of components over here and the dynamic values let's just go back let's just check with other values as well and there you go it's working for this one like it'll work for everyone <laughs> not just uh, like one book so yeah this looks pretty good um our home page is also not working okay what went wrong hmm cannot read properties of undefined book url oh i think the reason why the home page is not working is because like we have created our dynamic components but like the home page also has the cart section but in our home page we haven't like added our book uh, data and that's the reason why like the page is getting crashed so let's go to our home page as well uh, so here let's go to our home page and i think it's inside the product listing so let's go inside the product listing section right here uh, let's remove the detail section for now and let me yeah so we have this product listing card but we actually haven't given this the data to it and that is the reason why the page is getting crashed so let me import the data as well so import book data right uh, let's just import it from dot dot slash dot dot slash uh, dot dot slash it's inside the utils folder uh, inside book data file and here let me add the logic now in our home page remember that we only have five cards right but our book data has more than five uh, elements so if you go over to book data you can see that there are multiple elements i think there are almost like 17 uh, arrays if you count from zero so we don't want to like use the do the logic the same way that we did for the book details page like the books page because we don't want to have the 17 uh, cards over here we just want to have five cards so what we are going to do is we are going from this book data array that we have over here we are going to pick up five just the first five arrays and then we are going to loop through those five arrays and the way we do that is because like there there can be multiple ways of doing that but i'm going to use an array substring like method in order to get the five data so i'm going to say book data book data dot substring 
and inside this I'm going to add a value of 0 comma 6 okay and then I'm going to map this data and the rest will be the same now here we can add book with an arrow function and let's return product listing card let's save that and let's also add a book data prop here because the book data prop is what it is going to expect from us and let's just add a value of book this book right here and let me remove these product cards and if you check this out i think you will be able to get the data now let's just refresh this page hmm book data dot substring is not a function hmm. oh i think i missed a mistake right here i actually uh, mistook um array dot slice with substring you know uh like actually substring is for strings but for arrays you have a like a method called slice i actually mistook like slice with substring um you know guys that happens so instead of substring what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a method of slice and slice is going to like slice the arrays so we are giving we are we are giving it a value of 0 comma 6 and let's just see what happens if you do that let me refresh the page hmm and it's still saying book data dot stop string is not a function and i think it's because of this right here if i save this again and now i think we are being able to see the books but instead of five books there are six books so instead of the six i'm just going to say five and now we have the five books and i think these five books are also like way too much uh, how about four let's just add a five i think it's because of the fact that um we don't have a margin on the left and right yeah so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a gap between these four like these five fields these five cards like since we added a grid grid gap uh we have added a grid gap on our books page we can also add a gap property in our flexbox so what i'm going to do is let's go to our product listing styles.css which is basically the styling for this page and for in our listing container uh, let's add a gap property and let's set it to 3 rem right let's just save that and there you go we have some space between these uh, cards but it's still very cluttered so i'm just going to add like four um, cards over here so uh, in our product listing let's just uh, add a zero and four values inside slice let's just save that and i think this is much better so inside of slice what we are doing is we are just uh, taking a block of array from that entire array it's going to get sliced from zero to four minus one uh, index okay so zero one two three which is our four data that we are getting it over here and with the help of the gap property we are being able to add some spaces in between so yeah guys this is how like we have also added the dynamic values or the books in our home page if you go to this cart you are going to get directed to our book details page because we have already created the functionality for this okay and this is one amazing thing as i keep saying again and again you can create one functionality and that use and then use it again and again in your application so now i think the ui and its functionality is more or less done okay the main part is more or less done now i think we we should move on to more interesting sections which might be a little bit complicated but once you are able to get through those i think uh your project would look really strong because now i think since our like the the functionality and the ui are basically more most probably done i think we should get started with the authentication